What's up, YouTube? It's Brother Christopher Christopher here. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I, I wonder, do you know him? <laughs> my king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a well-trained of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You see, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Terror couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah! I've come to say today that in these days when we are killing ourselves trying to live, people still think that they can find peace of mind in pills. They try to eat their way to ecstasy. They try to drink their way to pleasure. They try to smoke their way to settled nerves. They try to puff their way to popularity and push their way to power. They try to bully their way to friendship and bum their way to world peace. But I've come today to say I know where a poor man has a chance. <laughs> Where a sick man can get well. Where an ignorant man can become wise. A bad man can be made good. A good man can be made better. And even a dead man can be made alive. It's in Jesus Christ. We live unto the Lord. And when we die... We die unto the Lord, 
Yea, the great end for which Christ died and lived again, lived always, is that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Jesus Christ is Lord. Now this word Lord means having power or authority. The Great Commission is based on the claims of our Savior's Lordship. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Lord means ownership. His lordship is based on his ownership. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Now he didn't have to put a signature in the corner of a sunrise. He's the owner. He didn't have to put a laundry mark in the lapel of a meadow. He's the owner. He didn't have to carve his initials in the side of the mountain. He's the owner. He didn't have to put a brand on the cattle of a thousand hills. He's the owner. He didn't have to take out a copyright on the songs that he gives the birds to sing. He's the owner. Beyond the human level, the word Lord stands as a reverent allusion to God. Now the Orthodox Hebrew in Jesus' day is in our own. Would not even pronounce the sacred name God, Jehovah, or Yahweh. Instead, when he read the sacred and incommunicable communicable name of God, he would simply say, the Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now Christians have applied this title to Christ in the latter usage. On either the human or divine level, the title Lord, Lord is a mark of respect and implied pledge of obedience. Once Simon Peter stood before a hostile crowd and said, God has made that same Christ whom you've crucified, both Lord and Christ. Christ represents the thing that God has done to redeem us. Lord represents what we ought to do because we are redeemed. Now, we ought to call him owner because he possesses absolutely our lives. In him we live and move and have our being. We ought to call him owner. We ought to call him father and be obedient sons and daughters. For he's our only hope and he's our only help. God is our refuge and our strength. He's a very present help in trouble. Therefore shall not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh walls to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder and burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. 
I will be exalted among the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Jesus is Lord because he came down the stairway of heaven, born in Bethlehem, hid in Egypt, brought up in Nazareth, baptized in Jordan, tempted in the wilderness. He performed miracles by the roadside. He healed multitudes without medicine and made no charges for his service. He conquered everything that came up against him. He took your sins and mine and went out on Calvary and there died. While hanging on that cross, Jesus said several things. But when the thief taunted him and said, If you be the Christ, come down from the cross and save yourself and us. To that taunt, Jesus never said a mumbling word. But the silence seemed to have said, You just wait until Sunday morning. And I'll show you, I'll show you that it's better to come up out of a grave than it is to come down from a cross. And he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died. I mean, he really died. Don't pay attention to a swoon theory. He died. Whoa, he... He died until the sun refused to shine. He died until the veil in the temple was rent in twain. He died until, Matthew said, the dead got up out of the grave and walked the streets after the resurrection. He died. The centurion says, surely this must have been the Son of God. I'm trying to say he died, but I don't like it. I, I, I don't like to, I don't like to stay there talking about he died. I, I like to rush on and say he was buried in Joseph's new tomb. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. Now that used to bother me. The one who holds the waters in the hollow of his hand and meets out the heavens with a span, comprehends the dust and weighs the mountains in a scale and a hill in the balance. The one who walked on the brow of nothing and with a gesture of his hands, worlds were formed. Scooped out the seas with the palm of his hand, dug deep the gorges, piled up the hills and propped up the mountains by his will. The moon and stars lean on his arm. Being buried in a borrowed tomb. Well, he wasn't going to stay there long, so a borrowed tomb with the... He just went down in that grave and stayed in the grave long enough to clean it out and make it a pleasant place to wait for the resurrection. And on schedule, he got up with every form of power in the orbit of his omnipotence. Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, men are thinking that maybe one of these days, his power is going to fail. They are thinking that one of these days that somebody will wrestle his power from him. Some have in mind they're going to destroy his power. Well, brother, if you're going to destroy his power, what are you going to use for power? If you try to destroy him by fire, he'll refuse to burn. If you try to destroy him by water, he'll walk on the water. If you try to destroy him by a strong wind, the tempest will lick his hand and lay down at his feet. If you try to destroy him by law, you'll find no fault in him. If you try to destroy him by a seal of an empire, he'll break it. If you try to destroy him by putting him in a grave, he'll rise. 
If you try to destroy him by rejection or ignoring him, soon you'll hear a still small voice saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If a man will open the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is the pearl from paradise. He's the gem from the glory land. He's truth's fairest jewel and he's time's choicest theme. He's life's strongest cord and he's light's clearest ray. He's purity's whitest peak. He's joy's deepest tide. His name stands as a synonym for free healing, friendly help, and full salvation. His blessed name is like honey to the taste. It's like harmony to the ear. It's like health to the soul. It's like hope to the heart. He's higher than the heavens of heavens, and he's holier than the holy of holies. In his birth is our significance. In his life is our example. In his cross is our redemption, and in his resurrection is our hope. At his birth, men came from the east, and at his death, men came from the west. And the East and the West met in him. Hallelujah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And at his name, to his name, in his name, every knee is going to bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every knee, the young knee, every knee, the old knee, every knee, the white knee, every knee, the black knee, every knee. Wounded knee, every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know, uh, many say, I've got a lot of living to do. I'll uh, accept him as Savior, and I'll acknowledge him as Lord, uh, but I've got a lot of living to do. You don't really live until you come to him who said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly.